Hello everyone, E here. Thanks for joining me for another LEGO video. And as you can see, the castle has been brought to the foreground. There is a wide shot of the castle that I've not seen in this channel for quite a while. After, well, making the three broomsticks and doing some other things, I thought about maybe starting another little separate mock similar to the three broomsticks, but decided that I should go back and do the texture and the windows of the great hall and this time I'm going to show you all that and going to show you the windows how I've made them how they're placed and everything else so let's get into it first thing that I did was actually go back and really fix all the various things that annoyed me with the texture. Uh, before, if you remember, although it was quite a while ago when I actually talked about changing the whole texture from simplistic like here to what you can see right here, I said that I would like to do some little tweaks, basically just uh, to make the pattern as good as possible and these transitions from these sections here that represent really damaged sections of the uh, castle walls. And what I did before that though was to improve its stability. Because before we had a lot of spaces where these here were usually a one by three plate that was held by only one snot over here. Since then I have gathered quite a few, I would say thousands of one by twos with snots. And I decided to take pretty much 75% of what you see on this whole wall apart and replace all the little sections where these things were held by only one uh, snot to uh, a more stable one. So as you can see here, it doesn't go left or right. The problem wasn't really a problem itself because you could really kind of navigate and make them all in a line but it made it a bit annoying when you had to move anything like that so I decided since I didn't like some of the sections here you might notice that they're, they're a bit different I have um, made them smaller but anyway now only a few sections have only one snot behind all this texture so this way uh, it's very um, well, it's a lot more sturdy for once and also it would prevent a lot of uh, kind of straightening up. And as I mentioned before, the patterns here were different. They were a bit bigger, a bit too big for my liking. And I tried to kind of make them a, f a bit more often happening alongside the walls and also not to make them so enormous. The one exclusion is over here because it actually goes around and around as you can see in that I, I, I like this when you can actually work with more than just one fourth of a pillar same goes with this side which has not really been uh, kind of decorated additionally with the pieces I use for decoration which are a bit of dark tan here and there one by one plate and mainly these pyramid shapes in tan that I really like they really kind of pop when you go uh, kind of far away from the texture also, I kind of tried to not really have an identical crack anywhere. I've tried to make them kind of different angles, different sizes a bit. And even the uh, tiles here, I always try to not make it identical and kind of just spread out. And as it is right now, I would say that it kind of looks, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. And I would say that it really gives that nice kind of damaged castle vibe without re really being it too much before it was a bit too much I would say now it's a lot better moving on you might notice that the trees here the two trees are missing I've removed them for the time being as I've said multiple times in the past there aren't any trees here and I thought that I would just place them there for the time being but now they're removed and maybe uh, I will not be bringing them back or maybe I'll just bring one of them for the time being but one day I'm hoping just not to have those trees there. So let's talk about the windows. As you might notice, 
we have big windows here that are over here on the top, but we also have the smaller windows, which is what I, I have changed since last time. And as you can see on the other side, we also have the old version when I used those typical uh, Lego windows. But even in the last update, you saw that I have separated this. This is a lot more closer to the actual castle. So let's talk about the smaller windows first. They are basically these things over here, which you might have seen already if you follow me on Instagram. I think I made a picture of these uh, kind of a few days ago. So what is the idea here, really? This, this is a plate that has been built to the side. But it also has this other, other piece, this tan thing here that, well, probably doesn't really make much sense to you. And I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So first of all, when people use these uh, kind of pieces, building brick to the side as windows, their their build usually supports it a lot better. Their walls are thicker for once. My walls are usually one brick uh, wide, sometimes two. But even here, it uh, doesn't really well. Other than the pillars themselves, which are uh, two bricks thick, the walls is, themselves are just one uh, one brick uh, wide. And this doesn't work because usually you just place, you take this and you put it between walls and you have like a, a sandwich between the actual window. But here that doesn't work. And I thought about recreating it again, but that would really cause many problems because if you make it wider, it would kind of ruin all the math that has been done here. And also you have to think that if you make it wider, then it actually since this is a Lego building, it's a bit different to an actual building. If you have two or three or even four plates, um, well, studs of uh, thickness on a building, that building, it would mean that it's very much smaller than the actual size would suggest. So seeing that this is a big project where there'll be multiple buildings, if you go by that, then you always have to think about, well, in this smaller space, can I fit? what I want and I always go when I start building anything I think about what I want to put in there and you have to make it even smaller and work with even less space and I really don't like that so I was really thinking ba based on that how to place windows on this structure this way without using this well without changing the thickness of the uh, building itself and I came up with this variation. So basically, these um, these pieces, the tan pieces, they they just work as additional way for them to be attached to the walls. And also, because here, as you might notice, let me just zoom a little bit, we have these, um, well, I don't know what exactly they're called, but these kind of uh, with jumpers to the sides, what's important is that the thickness there, just over here, see this is half a plate thick, which is very important. And also, they will also serve as additional, um, how should I put it, frame to the windows. So what happens is one of these, this tan piece goes behind over here, behind a pillar and we only see this side here. But that all only forms the frame from one side. If you put it next to another one like this, it forms the actual frame of the window. And that's exactly the amount of plates that we need to cover these four studs here. So let me just put at least some of them to their size so you can get a better idea what I'm talking about. And this is what the lower windows look placed in their spots, which might give you a better idea of how this works. So basically, we have the window from here without this border going over here and being attached behind this pillar up to here, including this side. So basically, each piece 
kind of provides half of the um, other windows, the one that is next to it, of its frame. Now you might ask, what about the one that is, well this one here fell down somewhere, where is it, there it is. You might ask, what about the window that is furthest to the right? Because it also has this piece, but where does it go? In order to kind of accommodate that, I went behind this pillar and removed from here up to here because this is the same way that it supports the upper side. I removed the two bricks behind, which means that this side comes inside of this pillar. And the same logic goes for the furthest one to the left because then it is left without the half of its framework. So again, this piece is hidden behind over here, behind this pillar, and it finishes the whole thing. And as you can see over here, some of the spots are still not uh, attached by more than one stub, which is fine on the lower side. But uh, yeah, other than that, with the addition of these pieces here on the top, it really fixes and gives you this kind of very nice frame. And here are the upper windows that we're going to place over here. It follows kind of the same logic, but it's a little bit more complicated. Let's examine one of them over here. Now again, we have this tan side, which is going to be attached behind each pillar. And this one provides a way to attach the window. But again, half of the window's frame is being provided by the one that's going to be next to it, like this. Except that this time, we have kind of this side here because unlike the lower windows, we have these um, additional details here that just go below, just below these arches here. And we can't really have this part sticking from here. It just doesn't work because it needs to be supported by another piece. And if it's over here, this plate, it kind of doesn't work. So instead, we continue on this side with a plate, two to plate over here, where there is a lot of reddish brown tile. And we put the tan on the other side. And this way, once they are next to each other, they form the perfect frame. Once again, I'm showing that I removed the bricks here. Because the way it is, every window provides half a framework. Otherwise, there is no way to attach these bricks to the side to a framework, right? So we need at least half of this tan piece so we get this frame. Just no way to go around it. So there is one piece, like so, that has only half of it done. And on this side, I have put tan tiles, which will exactly cover the distance up to this wall. So if we look from the back side, we can see that there is no hole here. And same goes for this side here. I have removed all these bricks here. And we're going to use this piece, which is only a framework, which is going to slide in over here behind the pillar and provide the furthest to the left window with its own framework. So let's get to placing them so you can see the tremendous difference once these windows made by me are placed in their positions. And here we go. Here are the windows placed on their spots. And it makes a tremendous difference, doesn't it? It looks, uh, well, great in my opinion. I'm really satisfied with this result. 
It was a big hassle and big venture to manage to place this sort of windows this way on this construction without cr really creating something completely different to accommodate these, this design. And also the way that I calculated the math for this amount of plate with these two half plates in order to create this whole framework of the windows. I really am pretty proud of that. And I feel like this is a great, great way to improve on the design. And actually, let's show you how it looks with the lights because it's a real treat. Okay, turning on the lights. Wow. Now doesn't this just look pretty, pretty nice? It just warms my heart how great this looks from the outside. It really looks great. Well, with that out of the way, I feel like I should have some closing words. What I am going to do is to do completely the same thing over on the other side, which should be a little bit easier seeing how this side here is covered by rock on the other side, so it will be only up to here. And also I need to place the window over on this side. I did some changes here, some work to make these more sturdy. I attached them to everything else. I'm thinking of a few ways to change this way here, which you'll probably see next time. I actually have the window here made. I just want to do some final tweaks on the very arch side. Other than that, next time uh, I have some other improvements and also we'll see how far I get with the other side and the back side, which is halfway done. But pretty much this is my update for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you find my work and my efforts inspiring or at least somewhat interesting, please subscribe and like my videos. It is very appreciated and it helps my channel to get out there. Once again, thanks for watching and I will see you very, very soon with the next LEGO Hogwarts update. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.